Good afternoon and welcome to our first new student webinar of our Summer Transition Series. My name is Brett Ruder. I'm the Director of Transition and Student Conduct at Fort Hayes State University. I want to thank each of you who are watching this webinar live or who are watching it recorded and posted on YouTube. Today, our topic is Preparing for Move-In Day, presented by the Fort Hayes State University Office of Residential Life. I'll allow our speaker to introduce herself in just a minute. If you do have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat feature um, of the webinar, and we will ask those questions either as we go along or at the end of our session. So without further ado, Emily Meyer. Well, good afternoon. We are glad that you've joined us. This is me. Um, just for a little context for those of you who are watching or listening, um, I am currently the McManus Hall Director here at Fort Hayes State. I'm starting my third year here. Um, and this will start year nine of living in a residence hall for me. So it's nine of the last 11 years I've lived in. So I'd like to think that I know a thing or two about living in. Um, and so please, if you have any questions throughout this webinar, feel free to type them in that chat box, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. So if you want to tweet, here's my Twitter, Twitter handle. I am trying to get better at that. So this would be good practice for me. Um, as you are starting to prepare for a move-in, I know it's a very exciting time, and right now is that time of the year when everybody's starting to pack their things and get organized. Um, and so here's a brief list of things that you should consider bringing and things that you should definitely leave at home. Uh, please leave your air conditioners and ceiling fans at home. All of our buildings are air conditioned, and so that is available for you on campus. But um, if you think you might get a little warm while you're staying here, an electric fan is by all means totally appropriate to bring. Um, extension cords should stay at home. They pose uh, a fire hazard in our residence halls. But um, a surge protector is a good alternative, and we'll give you that extra length on some of those cords if you need it. Uh, gas and charcoal grills are not allowed. We have them available throughout our communities if you'd like to grill out. Um, but bringing a George Foreman type grill for use in the kitchens only um, is an acceptable alternative. Please leave your pets at home. Um, as much as we love them, the rhythm tells you not a place for them. And move-in day is really stressful on them. And so finding somebody to come let your dog out or to feed the cat if you're going to be away for a couple of days is definitely a much better alternative than them potentially getting lost here in Hayes. Um, we do allow you to have a fish tank up to 10 gallons and um, fish, but not turtles. Um, the multi-head plastic lamps um, are also not allowed. They're also a fire hazard. But if you'd like some extra lighting, a small desk lamp is appropriate. Uh, candles and incense are also something that you should leave at home. They're also fire hazards. But if you would like to bring a candle warmer and an unburned candle to put on that candle warmer, those are appropriate alternatives, as are air fresheners that you um, plug into the wall. Um, so before you leave home, once you get everything packed into boxes or suitcases, make sure you put your name on your items. It helps us if you get separated from them, get them back to you in a timely manner. And putting your hall and room number on there um, will also expedite that process. We also suggest that you have your parents or guardians check their homeowner's insurance to find out if your stuff is covered while you're here. Um, if not, we definitely recommend you check, into, you check out getting some renter's insurance. But we don't anticipate anything ever happening to your belongings. We do, um, we live in Kansas, so nature happens. And some, having that little extra safety and security to replace any belongings that might get damaged is definitely worth it. So arriving on campus, those of you who are in a living learning community, the Honors College, the Transfer Network, or P4 can arrive on Wednesday, August 12th between 8 a.m. and noon. Those are the times that we will be ready for you to move in. If you are a traditional first-year student or a returning student, your move-in date is Thursday, August 13th from 8 a.m. to noon. Um, you should check your mail in the next couple weeks. We'll be sending out some driving instructions on how to enter campus and where you should look for parking based on the community that you'll be living in. Now, if you are an athlete or coming early for another um, 
Fort Hayes sanctioned event, you should be communicating with your coach or the coordinator of that event to figure out your move-in date and time. Uh, so here's a picture of that map that you'll be getting. In the mail, you can kind of see the different ways that you can enter campus. We're also encouraging people to stop, drop, and roll this year, um, meaning that you stop your car on the, unloading, or on the loading zone nearest your community, drop your belongings. We'll have some volunteers outside helping get people's things into the building, and that you have a family member roll your car to a designated parking spot so that somebody else can have that spot to unload their stuff and they can get moved in quickly as well. Where do you go? Um, you're going to want to check in in the lobby or front desk area of your assigned residence hall when you get on campus. Now, in the past, we've had um, some traffic backups because we have a large number of people moving in. So if you have a parent or a guardian or a friend who's driving your car, hop out of the car and walk over to your residence hall and get checked in before they even start unloading. It will definitely expedite your process and get you checked into your building much faster. You should make sure that you bring your ID, preferably your Tiger card, but if you don't have that yet, bring your state-issued ID to check in. You're going to complete some paperwork at the front desk and up in your room with your resident assistant, and you'll get your key. Meanwhile, you can have your family and friends do all of that heavy lifting and unloading of the car. Um, you must be the person who checks into your residence hall. Your mom can't come check in, your brother can't come check in, it has to be you checking in. Um, you're going to complete your RCR, which is your room condition report with your RA. So that room condition report tells the, the status of everything in your room as well as the quantity. So you're going to want to double check that when you get in and make any additions or corrections as needed. Um, your RA or your resident assistant is going to be another student who's living on your floor and is a resource for you if you have any questions or need assistance throughout the year. So get to know them early on because they're going to be a great resource and partner for you while you're at Fort Hayes. Also, please make sure that your family or friends know what room that you're going to. We are not allowed to give out that information at the front desk because of the um, Federal Education Rights Right to Privacy Act. Uh, so make sure that you text that to them or let them know before you get out of the car where you're going to be. So again, we're going to have volunteers around helping unload your car and get your belongings into the hall that you're living in. So please unload your items onto the sidewalk and have someone stay with those belongings while somebody else can move your car to a designated parking area. So, some very common questions that we get for students from students who are just arriving on campus are, where are the trash chutes? So, in McMidas and Weast, um, we ask that you take large trash, like broken down boxes, large packaging, um, things like that, outside to the dumpsters um, located behind both of those buildings. The trash chutes in McMidas are located on the east and west ends of the building. And in least, they are located on the back side of the building. Um, for those of you who may be living in Custer or Tire Place, you will just have to walk your trash outside because there are not trash chutes in those buildings. Uh, bathrooms are located in the middle of the McMidas Wing and the northwest and southeast corners of least. There are also public restrooms located down by the cafeteria in McMidas and on the first floor of least, should you have um, family or friends helping you unpack who need to utilize those. Another big question is, where do I get my mail? So our mailboxes are all located by the front desk in McMidas, Weast, and Tiger Place. And customer mailboxes are located on the second floor hallway right next to the hall director's office. It's a pretty small hallway. You can find it. Weast and Custer Hall will have combinations for your mailboxes. The combinations are opposite the way that your high school lockers may have been. So instead of starting your combination by turning to the right, you turn it to the left, but it's the same number of turns, um, just flip-flopped. All of our other halls will have keys, and you will be assigned to a specific mailbox that that key works for. 
If you're ordering packages or books or expecting a care package from home, you're going to get a package slip in your mailbox once those packages have been logged by the front desk. Um, so you just need to take that package slip along with your Tiger ID to the front desk during desk hours to claim and sign for that package. Um, we understand that a lot of times people get alerts on their phones letting them know that a package has been delivered, but all of our halls log our packages so that we can track them. So even if it says your package got delivered to the hall, give the mail person a couple hours to log that package and get that package slipped in your mailbox before you come looking for it. So making sure that your mail gets to campus is also really important. Each of our halls has two addresses, one that the U.S. Postal Service uses and one that FedEx and UPS uses. So you can find all of those addresses by going to this link through the Res Life webpage, clicking on Student, and then looking for the addresses. Make sure your family and friends know the difference between the two and what method they're using to send any care packages or mail, because having the right address on those items, make sure that they get to your hall faster. Parking and parking permit. So you're going to want to order a parking permit if you need one through the University Police Department. Um, they are getting ready for the fall semester and should be taking orders online for permits starting around the beginning of August. You should check your Fort Hayes email for that announcement and when those parking permits become available. Um, they can be ordered and paid for online before you arrive on campus or after you arrive, it's up to you. You can also select whether you'd like that permit to be delivered to your campus address or if you'd rather go pick it up at the University Police Department during regular business hours, which are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You will need your photo ID to pick those up and the office is located in the lower level of Custer Hall. Uh, where you can park is anywhere in the, the brownish tan area, which is the area surrounding the residence hall, out to the um, football field, and then out to Cunningham as well. The green areas on campus are commuter and faculty staff parking spots. Um, so don't park there if you're a residential student. There are also some parking spots within the tan areas that are designated as staff only or unloading only. So make it sure you pay attention to the curb painting so that you're not parking in a spot where you're not allowed. What do you do after you've unpacked? For our LLC students or Honors College, Transfer Network, and P4 students, you're going to receive some information on orientation activities, but plan to be ready to start around noon on the 12th. For everyone else, our traditional students, as well as all of those groups that I previously listed, starting August 13th at 1.30 p.m., you should be checking in at Sheridan Hall for your Tiger Impact events and follow the schedule for the day. Does anybody have any questions? Now is a great time to type those questions in that chat box. See is how there are no oh. other. Oh. This one says, I'm coming for Golden Beginnings. Where will I move in? You will move into your residence hall directly. Um, that information will be coming out, but you will be moving in on August 9th as a pre-arrival. If you're coming in for the Golden Beginnings pre-orientation experience, then you'll go to whatever hall you're living in. So if you're living in we still go there, or McMidas, you'll go there. Great question, Abby. Will it be my real room? We make every effort to get you into your real room um, when you're here to move in. We don't anticipate anybody being displaced this year. Um, the times that does happen is when we've got some construction going on, and right now that's not happening. So you should be able to move into your room for the, for the school year. 
So the question is, you move in on the 12th, but school doesn't start until the 17th. What happens in between? That's a great question. Um, as Emily said, our Tiger Impact Fall Orientation Weekend um, happens in between there. So if you're moving in on the 12th, that would mean you're in a living and learning community, and you'll be in living and learning community orientation programs on the afternoon of the 12th and of the morning of the 13th. Then the rest of the students will begin fall orientation programs, and the LLC students will join in on the 13th um, and go that Thursday afternoon on the 13th, all day on Friday the 14th. And then there's some um, probably there's um, some more events on that weekend. Um, there are a variety of things happening from um, headphone disco, which is a disco dance party where you wear headphones and rock up to some music. There's a part-time job fair, so if you're looking for an on- or off-campus part-time job, um, there'll be opportunities to meet up with your freshman seminar groups, um, a mentalist, a variety of things happening. And so um, you will be receiving a postcard actually within the next week or two. Um, I was proofing it just as I left the office. Um, postcard will be dropped that will have more information about all the events happening. Um, as well as if you are in a living and learning community, you'll receive a letter with your exact detailed information. Um, if you have any questions, all of that information is available on www.fhsu.edu slash FYE for the first year experience. And I will have all of the schedules up there. You'll also be having some floor meetings with your RA and the people that you'll be living with. Um, and those are scheduled into those, those Tiger Impact um, schedules. So you'll be able to meet the people who are living on your floor, start talking about things that you want to do throughout the year because your RA will be planning some fun events for you to participate in throughout the school year as well. Uh, our next class question is, I was told that I needed to take a CPR class and I was offered one on Friday the 14th. Will that work out to take it during the orientation? Hannah, that is a great question. Um, can you, if you can um, send an email to B, as in boy, L, B R U M E R at FHSU.edu, and we can type that into the chat window there. Um, we'll type that email address in there. If you could tell me a little, you can just email me with a little bit more information about what you might be needing to take that class for, if it's for a major. Um, oops, too many U's and N's there. Any yeah. R, yeah, there we go. Um, you can just email me with a little bit more information about that. Um, and then we can follow up. I've not heard of one. It was a CPR class, and that's being offered on Friday, August 14th. But we will check into that. <laughs> How do we find out what textbooks we need for each class so we can start pricing them online? So with us today in this room is Trisha Klein. Trisha is our Director of Admissions. So I'm, I'm going to let her answer this question. Great question, Abby. Well, there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, if you're at home right now, you can get on your Tiger Tracks account on Tiger Enroll. What happens is every new student needs to, well, all students actually, not just new ones, need to finalize their enrollment, which means make payment arrangements. And everybody has to do this by midnight on August 5th. When you get on your Tiger Tracks account and log into Tiger Enroll, that is where you finalize your enrollment. Also on there, there is a link to the bookstore, and it'll show you on there what class, what books um, you will need. That's when you can choose to purchase them from our bookstore. If you do that, it's great. They'll package them for you, and all you have to do is when you move up here, go to the bookstore in our Memorial Union, pay for them, and take the whole box and go, and you don't have to kind of go look for them yourself. Um, but if you do want to look for them online, you'll also be able to have those names of all of those books that you need at that time, and you can do some looking around before you get up here. If all fails, you can wait till you move in. Um, once you move in, there's a lot of people who will go to the bookstore on move-in day or the next few days before classes start to get their books as well, and that is perfectly fine. I've been awarded loans. Do I pay the net amount or the amount shown on my bill, which does not have the loan amount deducted? I'll let Trisha answer this question as well. Okay. I'm not sure if I 100% answer the question or understand the question. So if I don't, please um, chat back in there and try to correct me. But 
on your bill when you go in to finalize your enrollment, it's going to give you the total amount for tuition on Tiger Enroll that you owe. Um, and then you get to choose whether you have financial aid or if you need to pay some of the money by check or credit card, you have those options as well. If you have more financial aid and scholarships than needed, like your loans, um, that will then go directly to your housing costs. And you can log in and look at that as well on the financial page of your Tiger Tracks because you'll need to pay your housing as well. And so you should be able to see that whole loan amount in there or at least how much you're going to need to pay for your housing. I'm not sure if that totally answers your question or if that's a little bit confusing. You can um, if you want, if you have more questions about it. If you call the Office of Admissions, you can talk to myself, Tricia, or one of the admissions counselors who recruits your area, and they can actually get into your information and help you kind of go through that um, and explain how much you have out there and how to do that. We can go step by step with you if you'd like. But if our scholarships haven't gone through your system yet, do we have to pay for it in full by the 5th? Well, it, it kind of depends. Um, it depends what scholarships you have. If they're Fort Hayes scholarships or if they're outside scholarships, and if we can get them here before August 5th, um, what I would do is if your scholarships are not showing up on Tiger Enroll yet, I would hold off just a little bit and see if we can get them to show up before August 5th. That way you don't have to pay that full amount. Now, if there's some outside scholarships that you have that aren't going to be here by that time, a lot of times what happens is students will have to pay one, at least one-third of their bill um, to go ahead and make their arrangements. So one-third of it, then their scholarships can come in and pay for the rest of it, hopefully, from there. So the Office of Admissions, again, can help you with that if you have any other questions, or if you want us to check on some scholarships for you and where they're at and what the holdup is, we're more than happy to do that as well. Are there any other questions about preparing for move day or the beginning of the school year process? Well, if there aren't, you do have um, Emily's contact information. If you have questions about preparing for move-in day, um, you, if you don't have the Office of Admissions phone number, Tricia, that phone number, yeah. unless you type it in the box for us. Yeah, you can always call the Office of Admissions at 785 628-5666, and all of the admissions counselors that were all at your guys' high schools um, can be reached at that number, so they can always help you then, too. So our next new student webinar um, is scheduled, we'll come back to that question Abby, in just one minute. Our next new student webinar is scheduled for Wednesday in a couple days from now. 3.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and this will be Understanding Fraternity and Sorority Life, as well as the recruitment process that will be presented by the Center for Student Involvement. So, um, Abby had a question, maybe for Emily, do we need to reserve loft beds? So, if you know that you're going to want to loft your bed, if you've talked with your roommate and you're going to loft one of them or both of them, you can submit that loft request now um, in our goal is to have those lofts put up before you arrive on campus. Otherwise, if you think you can um, be in your room a couple days without a lofted bed, you can always submit, you can submit that request once you get on campus if you're willing to wait a couple days. Um, but that form is on the Residential Life website underneath our um, forms and frequently asked questions section. Something else I might um, let you all know is that on Sunday after you move in, if you are not sure where your classes are at, um, the Office of Admissions, um, along with Brent's office here, will be working on doing a what's called the class crawl. And that will be on the information that will come to you as well for Tiger Impact. But what we'll do is we'll take groups around and help you find your classrooms in what buildings you're going to and everything like that. So if you're a little bit nervous about not knowing where to go, don't worry about it. There'll be hundreds of other students there as well, and we'll take you around and find everything for you. 
Well, if there are no final questions, we want to thank Emily uh, for presenting to us today uh, about preparing for move-in day. Um, this will also be recorded. This has been recorded, and it will be posted on YouTube. And so as soon as that's posted, we will send it out to you. That way, if you have those additional questions that you're like, oh, I know Emily talked about, but I can't quite remember. Um, but we will be we will distribute it to email as soon as we get it downloaded and posted to YouTube. So if you have any other questions, um, please let us know. You've got contact information. And hopefully we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday's new student webinar about understanding fraternity and sorority life. Have a great day.